you need to update your Chrome browser right now because there is a big vulnerability on it and it's so scary that if someone sends you a link like this, just a simple link and you opened it, you can get hacked, your entire computer compromised. It's same as downloading a malware, except that you just visit a website and there is a remote code execution on your machine happening right now. And if you want to learn hacking, then check out my course, which is down in the description box below. So you need to go over here to these three dots, go down to help, go down to about Google Chrome, and then you basically need to update it. But for me, I did update it, unfortunately, before recording, and I couldn't find a vulnerable version anywhere to download, and I couldn't risk downloading a malware. So yeah, that's kind of stupid. But I also want to show you how I personally think this exploit and this vulnerability works, although I'm not 100% certain. And as the story progresses, we will probably get a better details and better picture of how this all actually went. So hopefully this is a good analogy and let's see if I'm correct or I'm not. So let's get to the bottom of this. So how this vulnerability and this exploit and this actual whole thing worked. So you might have heard stories of how actually this all could have worked and it involved, for example, we have here a simple dictionary which says C, G, and B. And how it worked, there's something in JavaScript called with you entered this question mark and it's just an optional chaining. Basically, if you do dot G now and question mark dot B, as you can see, it gives you one, two, three. And if you do just C dot G dot B, it gives you also one, two, three. So what's the difference between these two? Well, there's a difference. Let me update the object right here to actually instead of G say A. And now if I do C dot G dot B again, it will give me an error because the G has been updated with an A. However, if I do this, what I've done here, it will just give me undefined without giving me an error. So this is kind of useful when you want to do error handling. But other than that, I don't really see a purpose on this. Again, I might be wrong. I'm not really JavaScript friendly myself. I'm not really working with this language that much. But again, it could be happening. And this is probably why this was useful. Another important detail that I have to tell you is arrays are very important, not dictionaries, arrays. And for example, you have one, two, and three. And this is a normal array. However, there is arrays in JavaScript which could have holes in them. And how do you do that? Well, you basically define it with one, and then you put two commas, and for example, a three. And as you can see, the browser already detects that this is empty. Even though you didn't provide anything here, it will immediately check whether this is empty or not. So you can so you basically can create like a variable like g which contains for example one two three and then you can just say g second element of the array dot two string and it will work fine however if the second element of this array is empty it will fail because you can't call two string on an element which doesn't exist but if you add the question mark which is optional chaining or whatever you call it it won't fail it will just give you undefined because that's actually what's happening it is empty so now that you understand this, what's like prerequisites for this exploit or whatever, we can now start to take into the more complex stuff. This is my code for how I personally think this all kind of had to go down. Again, I'm not 100% certain if this is actually remotely true. We have a packed array, which is one, two, and three, which has just three elements, and these are floats. And this right here is where we do the engine V8 engine optimization thingy, where we actually optimize this array so much that the V8 engine gets kind of used to this and just thinks that this is going to be always static and not dynamic. Kind of. I think that's how it works, at least. And then we do this for the 30,000 iterations to just optimize the packed array to the, so it actually is just optimize and it always just thinks that the packed array will be one two and three and four and these three elements and then what we do is we do the packed array and then we update it with an empty element and then we have trigger optional chaining which is used here to just optimize the array and it basically calls the two string on the index and we just call this entire thing just to two string i don't know why we probably should put here like a one to just optimize it better it's just here and this is how it basically should look like and then after we update this to basically be empty, we call trigger optional chaining and we do a console.log and we go for the second element, which is empty, as you can see here. And we call to string on an empty thing or an empty, I don't want to, I don't even know how to define this, an empty object, let's say, I don't know. And, and basically it will fail, but it will say undefined as it does, as you can see here in a patched version. If I update, you can see that's undefined. However, the thing that's happening here is after you confuse the V8 to just always think that this is going to be, you know, good. And once you, for example, update this to basically enter a new type, which is an empty type, 
it gets confused and this is why it's called type confusion and once it calls to string over here it doesn't actually think that this is empty if that makes sense it's st it still thinks there's a value even though there isn't and once you call to string what will this actually be will it be empty what? no it will actually just leak values from memory of the process that's how it works i hope that's how it works because that just makes so logical to me that's just logical to me i've done some research there is no consecutive evidence of this actually being true but through the research what i've seen online and from the theo joe video i kind of came up with this theory that this is how it kind of worked because we've seen this before on firefox and also chrome in the older older versions from i think 2014 uh, 2014 i'm sorry what a what am I talking about 2014? But again, this is how I personally think it kind of looked like. So we will see how the story progresses and how this all kind of works. Again, this is just my theory. So make sure to subscribe because once there is more to this story, I will definitely make a video. This is just like been found a few hours ago. So it's very interesting. Again, I did use some AI to kind of research this and kind of poke around to see how it actually works so I can make a good video. As of to how can this lead to remote code execution, I do have some ideas with how, you know, primitives can be made with this, how there's fake objects and address of to be involved. But honestly, I don't have enough puzzles to actually show you the full picture. So puzzle pieces, I'm sorry to show you a full picture. So I'm not going to be I'm actually going to be excluding that part from the video because I don't want to yap too much about it, even though I'm not 100 percent certain off of this. I'm kind of 50 percent certain like it could it's it's something like this just take it as it is it's something like this however as of to how it can execute code i'm not entirely i'm not 100 percent certain that i know that just yet but as the story progresses i will definitely make a video on it so stay safe stay responsible and as always peace